Hey, we're live. It's James Medique speaking, trainingsites.io. Uh, I want to tell you about another great agent or super agent uh, called GenSpark and how it compares to Manus.im, which is a tool that I talked about, I think, two weeks ago. Um, and it's basically one of those ones, it's a step past what we normally do, where we prompt and get a response back. This is one where it's a complex task or a group of prompt and responses that the agent does instead of us, all we have to do is basically say, hey, I want this done. So this is one of those steps closer to the fact that we've got a digital assistant that's available for us to work at any time. Now, if you're not familiar with Manus, uh, I did the video, uh, when was it? Probably three, almost three weeks ago now. Uh, I'll put all the links to these ones as well. And Manus is one that uh, I basically said, create a learn dash course uh, in WooCommerce integration. And uh, what I told it basically was that, hey, I want you to create a course on this. I want you to upload it to my website, my WordPress website, and put it into my learning management software, which I was using as an example was LearnDash. And I said, I also want you to create a product in WooCommerce, my shopping cart. I want you to connect the two together and make sure that the product's ready for sale. So that was me basically saying to an assistant, hey, go get it done. And Manus and the GenSpark one I'm going to show you in a second basically do things like that. Now, this is a huge bonus for us, right? If you're building your education business, uh, it's one thing to be creating content. And I use that as an example. But remember, it doesn't have to be content. It doesn't have to be course content. It could be an email marketing uh, plan. It could be your social media posts. Um, it could be repurposing content. There's a whole bunch of additional things things that you can ask these for do. The part that's nice is it's just like, here's the task, go do it. It's not you using the AI tools. It's the agent understanding which ones have to be done in which order, which ones rely on the step before, making sure that all of it makes sense and doing stuff either directly in your browser or talking to other agents to get it done. So uh, Manus is there, pretty cool one. Uh, I quite liked it. The only issue that I ran into is if you give it a really big complex task, it runs out of what I think is called the context window. And think of it this way. You can only have so much information in the task. And if it runs out, it basically stalls. And that's what happened to me is it stalled near the end where it got 90% of the base of the task done. And then it wasn't able to, uh, to complete it. Still really powerful, just means you have to maybe break it up uh, a little bit when you're doing this. So the other one that I'm going to look at right now is called genspark.ai. Uh, and this is one where I'm logged in and it's free to join. Uh, you get a certain number of use a join and then it is a paid version after, which I'll get to in a second. But the difference between Genspark and Manus uh, is this. When you use Manus, basically what you're doing is you're saying, if there's something in the browser, I want you to do that. So that can be logging into places, making prompts here, doing research here. Anything that's in the browser that you would normally do in the browser, that's the kind of thing that Manus did. On the other hand, what this one does is if you looked on the left-hand side, there's also, also things like Image Studio. So not only does it have access to the browser, it also has specific access to other tools. So for example, in the image studio and the video generation, some of the ones uh, are Kling and there's a number of other different tools that I'll, I'll show you the links on. But basically it's, it's an agent that says, hey, I'm gonna do something with these graphics. I have to go and use this other tool or talk to this other tool to do what the person is asking in GenSpark. So it's a lot more flexible in that way in that it does things like deep research, video generation and images, which wasn't something necessarily that was built in uh, to Manus. So that's kind of the big uh, piece there. They do have a couple built in agents as examples. And the ones that they give are plan travel to San Diego, uh, AI call make reservations, for example, uh, book a table uh, for a birthday celebration. So the examples they show here are not ones really for an education business. So I thought, hey, I better go and see if I can create a course again and let's see what happens. So in fact, that's what I did. And uh, what I put together was, hopefully you'll be able to see this again. 
I thought it'd be a good idea to, uh, you know, use the same idea. Um, and what I did is, I'll just show you this right at the start, get up to the top. I made the screen a little bit bigger, so hopefully you can see it. I'm just scrolling up here. There we go. So uh, basically what I did is I said, create a complete online course from YouTube playlist. So my idea here is I want a course on, in this case, podcasting. But instead of doing the research myself, I just want GenSpark to go and do the research from YouTube and then create the course based on existing YouTube videos. And it basically came back and said, I'm helping you to create an online course for YouTube playlists. Uh, and it says, what do you want the topic area to about? Um, do you have particular YouTube playlists, which I didn't, but if I had some come to mind, target audience and specific learning. Uh, and basically what I did is I just said how to start a podcast. I didn't give it uh, a whole bunch of extra information. Let me just see what I can come up with here. I can't get the screen to open up. Uh, and basically it just said creating a complete online course, how to start a podcast. And then this is what it did in the background. It wasn't me doing the research. What GenSpark actually did is it knew that there was more than one kind of thing to starting a podcast. So what it did is it said, I better do a video search for how to start a podcast, a complete guide. And it came up with four videos. So we've got those ones there. It's got the number of views. So these were all high view ones. And then it said, well, let me search for more specific information about equipment and software. So knows the basics. I got to have some equipment. Uh, picked those ones out. Got four videos there from YouTube. Uh, podcast distribution and marketing. How do I monetize it? Got four there. Uh, and then post format structure and creation tips. Got an additional four there. And then what it did said, okay, I've got my 12 videos. What do I need to do now? Well, I better analyze them and take a look and see, hey, what's in this video transcript that I can use to create a course? And it went through all of those particular four chunks through the videos and it came up with a course. And the course is actually here. Now, it broke it into seven modules covering all aspects of the podcast and you can see the modules are here. The other thing that it did, there's the course in HTML. Um, it gave some recommendations here, that kind of thing, and the appropriate video that was used when it created that content. The other one that's kind of cool, and I'm going to open this up, um, is it created a website for the actual course? I didn't ask for it, um, but it's actually got one here. And if I click view, hopefully it'll open up properly. And there we go. I had a website created for me for the course. Uh, and again, I did none of the copy. I did none of the layout. Uh, this was all done by GenSpark for me based on the course that it created from public, uh, avail publicly available YouTube videos. Uh, so we got 10 modules, 30 lessons, 15 activities, and it's got some, uh, you know, what you will learn, course outline. Uh, it's got 10 particular pieces. And then it's got the additional objectives in the modules. And I'll open these ones in a minute. And in fact, if you look here, it says introduction to podcasting. Uh, if I click that, it actually goes down to the model. So this one does not have any paywall or anything on it. It just created a website with the actual course content on it. Uh, and you can see that it's well laid out, well put together. Uh, and it's also got a number of videos with the particular pieces. Okay, uh, nice table set out again, very, very well done. Common mistakes, that kind of thing, and content planning. So this is a pretty good uh, setup to a lesson uh, and a course where it's got 10 things and all I started off with was a couple sentences. This happened all in the background. Now, let me just close this one and see if I can open another one. Um, the other thing they did do, and let me just see if I can do it. There's the HTML, the videos. They actually created a PDF as well with the same content. And I, there it is, view course PDF. So if I click that, there's the actual PDF that was created. Uh, it's got the same uh, information as the, uh, uh, as the actual website, but you can still, it's well laid out, very professional. Uh, exercises, takeaways, that kind of thing are all done uh, properly there. So here's a situation now where I'm the course creator and I can go to uh, an AI agentic tool like Manus or like GenSpark and be able to spit out courses pretty quickly. 
Um, the problem with all of these for us as a course creator is I think that if you want to do this, you have to be heavily involved with it to get it the way that you want. But more importantly, the expense of doing it for with any of these tools is going to become prohibitive if you do it on a regular basis. Uh, these ones use credits and the credits get uh, picked up pretty quickly. Just to give you an example, uh, let me just open this one and I'll open up my account just so that uh, we see this here. We'll see what I'm actually set already for the daily usage. I'm just going to go, I think it's here. Yeah, so um, this one right here on the bottom left hand side, hopefully you can see it there. Uh, yeah, so right now I get um, 200 credits a day and I'm at 136 credits. And all I've been doing is actually looking at the ones that I did previously. And I asked three questions for clarification on it beforehand. So if you want to use these on a regular basis and create content on a regular basis, they can save you a world of time and do some really great work. You just have to be prepared for how you're going to budget that into your system and into your basis, uh, into the your process. So uh, again, two tools, Janspark.ai Manus.im, both of them are really, really great tools to completely automate stuff that you would normally do. Um, so those are the ones I want to show you today. I think um, what I'm going to do a little bit later is do another video because there's something else coming around the bend here for people who are teaching stuff that's going to take advantage of tools like this, but not in the way that you think it. So here's what I want you to do. If you're in the education business, go open up a free account. I'll make sure to put the links there below and just play around with them and think about how can I use this in my education business to start, build and grow it. It's not just about the content like I was showing you. Think about things for email, for social media, for tasks that you have to do on a regular basis. Think outside the box and see if there's anything that you can either offload in terms of the work that you do or speed them up so that you don't have to spend your valuable time working on tasks that don't generate uh, actual income for you. My name is James, trainingsites.io. If you haven't already, please make sure to join the community. It's free to join. All of my content is there and I'm there as well. And then also like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'll be back again tomorrow or maybe later today with another great video. Take care. Expect the best.